Hiya, Nikki. Hello. Um, I'm so, so glad you've given up this time today to have a chat because you know what I'm trying to achieve. You know that I'm reaching out to people who I respect massively in the business world who have come up with a really sound business model that I think will act as inspiration for teachers in the classroom who are thinking of developing exit strategies and coming up with diverse income streams. And I yeah. think in particular, your business model lends itself really, really nicely to that. So could you just tell us a little bit about the wraparound care service that you offer through your business? So we deliver um, after school clubs uh, and my business is cooking. So we do deliver in school cooking workshops, but our sort of um, our business model really is after school clubs. So we are in essence providing a babysitting service for parents. Right. Um, the schools are required to provide wraparound care. They're looking for breakfast clubs. They're looking for after school clubs and parents need somebody to look after their kids so that they can obviously kind of work until six o'clock or what time it is. And if they can get their children to do something that, you know, that they like, then you know they can tick all the boxes right um so so yeah and it, it, it's it's great for um for teachers i suppose because they know the school environment they know how to get their foot in the door um which so this is, takes place mainly in primary schools yeah so for me it's definitely is primary schools yes so you have um i know you're a franchisor and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment but basically you would go in, you would approach the head teacher, you would offer your services with your fully compliant business, and then you have the school who endorses you and allows you in, but then you yeah. also have a second client, which is making the parents opt for your business as well. So it's almost like a two-pronged approach. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think if you can give schools um something that they don't have then that's great uh and if you can give parents something that will benefit the kids as well then that's it doesn't have to be cooking does it because no gosh no it can be anything so there's loads of sports providers out there but craft you can do yoga dance drama um there's so many different things so whatever your passion is uh you know that's the starting point really yeah. but there's no overheads because occasionally you'll have to pay the school as a venue. Um, okay. It depends on which area you live, but then you would account for that in your costs. And then depending on what business you ran, it would depend on the cost per child. So something like myself, cooking or craft, for example, you're gonna have higher cost per child, you're gonna have less children doing the session safely. If you are a dance provider or, um, I don't know, sports activity provider, then you can see lots more children. So your cost per child are going to be right. greatly reduced. Right. So I think you hit the nail on the head, you find your joy and you build your business <laughs> around offering that to, to younger children. I am aware our, internet, very our internet's a bit laggy at the moment, Nikki. I don't know how it is at, at your end for me. Is it okay? Mine was okay this time. No, so it's, no it's fine. I'm, I'm just losing it slightly, but no, I'm, I'm still getting the gist of what you're saying. So, okay, in the spirit of overthinking things and making this complicated, how compliant as a, as a business do you have to be? What steps, what tangible steps do you need to do to put yourself forward as an after-school provider? Uh, depending on what your business model is, you may or may not need some qualifications. Um, so me doing cooking, I need a food, food hygiene certificate. Right. Obviously working in schools, you're going to have to have some sort of a safeguarding certificate. You're definitely going to need your DBS. But if you're a teacher looking at uh, creating a new income stream, you will know this already because you work in schools. Yeah. Um, you obviously need to be insured. Uh, but that's just a matter of many different courts saying this is my business, this is the agent of the kids, and then the insurance company will ask you the questions and come back to you with a with a price. It's not so it's, it's not that really difficult, easy. Is it? You just need you need again the infrastructure of your business, you need a separate business bank account, you need a good invoicing system, and you need a good pricing system. Yes. It's your terms and conditions again, which is what I talk about. We don't set foot in in your school until you paid us exactly or we will invoice yes. you within 31 days it's not like or in some respects if you are dealing with the parents and you're there for a six-week period every thursday night 
whenever I've had to do this and sign Ellie up for tap dancing, I had to put a check in for £36 before she even set foot. Yeah. So you exactly. And actually, um, technology makes everything so much easier now yeah. because there are so many booking platforms out there. So you pay a monthly fee and you can hold all your registers. You can ask any specific questions. You can, um, you know, who's paid, who hasn't paid, if they paid by bats, if they paid by check, if they paid by cash. Everything is really, really yeah. so much easier. All you need to do is go and turn up and deliver your session. You, need and to, the, you just need to have that, that oomph. I'm going to go out. Have that oomph. Yeah. yeah, but but equally, without making your business absolutely massive, you can scale it because you know that yourself, the maximum that you can deliver an after school club is five days a week. Yeah. But you only need to get somebody to, to do another five schools. That's two of you. And that's okay. It's not doubling your income. No, it's, no. Yeah, obviously it's, it's enabling you at some point because this is this is the kind of thing i always want to aspire to within the business world i want a business model that runs without me in it yeah. my business needs to be able to be running if i broke my leg but i think what you've you've alluded to there which is just a really simplistic way of saying there is a gap in the market for wraparound care there is a gap in the market for breakfast clubs and school want to provide a variety there's things like science clubs and stem clubs and oh gosh yes and, but well i'm just interrupting you but i think those sorts of things are great as well because as a teacher you know that there are certain things that the school needs to deliver and you also know that there isn't a fun thing to deliver those things. There isn't a time because we've got to focus on all those core subjects. So if a school can deliver that art session or that cooking session as an after school club, then they're ticking a box as well. Perfect. It's, it's, yeah, it's just trying to find, I think the key things are find something that you're passionate about. Um, and, and I suppose it's great because a lot of teachers, I, I speak to teachers obviously a lot, they, they enjoy working with the kids yeah that's the thing that they really enjoy so that's the thing that and what's particularly good about this business model is it frees you up in the day to run your business but also it frees you yes. up in the day to do additional income in the time being until you get yourself on your feet you might want to do exactly. a mark and you might want another job doing something whilst you build a business that becomes so much of a brand that you know and i know that a really good business model like this jumps around the local primary schools so kitty cooks is is um is doing st james's for this half term on a thursday yeah. but then they're doing st mary's on a monday and within and you develop really really good relationships so yeah. again it's, it's just the business compliance that you need to do google is your friend but running yeah, absolutely after school, before and after school breakfast clubs and wraparound care is an incredible and then what you can do is if your business model suits you just drop down an age group so it is incredibly lucrative i think to then take your brand be delivering wraparound yeah. care then book a church hall from 10 till 11 in the day and do it as a mums and tots group you know, you can, yes. you can be delivering it then direct yeah. to the parent with the child. There are so many people who are looking for tumble top. I love tumble books. Holiday books. I mean, that's you know, a really big thing as well. Obviously, we have such long holidays. Parents can't stop working for six weeks at yeah. a time. So if you can provide that holiday club, Brilliant. then that's great as well so it, and i mean obviously it depends on your your business and what you're doing it depends on the competition in the area i mean uh, you know nothing in life is really simple um but nothing in life is as difficult as you think yeah. as you might think it is either there is a saturated um, element to the market there's more street dance there's more sports that are doing these yeah there's loads events. of sports there is loads yeah. of sports there's no yeah. ways about it however there is a massive demand for sport or loads of sport exactly and i think the thing is as well is that there will always be a demand for whatever your business is because let's be honest no business is a new business anymore what's and, and important is what, how you deliver I'll tell you one of the ones that i would go into is coding 
I yes. will go into computer coding. I, yeah. think I can always sniff a new lead. And if yeah. I was going in to deliver anything at this moment in time, it would be computer coding. It would be because it's now coming more prevalent at GCSE computer science. Yeah. And particularly at A level. And it's now just been recognized um, at Oxford and Cambridge as the degree. To yes. go into. Yeah. So computer coding clubs, that's all you do. You set yeah. yourself up, you go in and you say, right, we've got a program of study for six weeks. This is what we'll charge the kids. You use the school's computers. Yes, yes. But, but you know what? I mean, that's not my bag at all. But I could find somebody to deliver a coding session for me. Yeah. And there's no reason why you can't take that business model. You don't have to physically deliver those sessions yeah. yourself. And actually, long term, you will want to. No. You want to be there, you know, communicating with the with the schools and placing people in <laughs> the schools with your compliant business. Now, like exactly. myself, you are a franchisor, and franchising sometimes gets gets a tough um, a tough deal. It's a bad name. It gets a bad name because there's people out there who don't know what they're doing. Um, the big franchises don't. So you walk into any major store and the chances are you stood in a franchise, you stood in Costa Coffee, yeah. you stood in Greg's, you stood in McDonald's, <coughs> they're all franchises. Where franchising I think gets a bad name is when people have developed a really good business model and then they suddenly franchise it with no understanding. Now I certainly wouldn't have you here today if I didn't know that you're an absolutely authentic franchise or like myself. And if you don't want to do the hard yards, you buy a business in the box and your business is exactly that. How many franchisees do you have, Nikki? So we've got 10 across the UK, uh, yeah. not Scotland, actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't... You don't uh, not mind. just the UK, my dear. Where have you branched in? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. I've just opened in Portugal. <laughs> Started in Portugal. Uh, with... Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for that. No totally problem at all. See, the world's your oyster. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, you, you know... <coughs> Not, not just my franchise, obviously, not just your franchise, but franchising is a good way of actually running your own business, but having that support network around you. It works. Pick it up and you say, right, all that's done. Yeah. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is get the kids. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And so it won't suit some people. Um, but if you're somebody who, you know, you, you, you want to... You want to deliver that business. You're really passionate about something, but you want that support network behind you. It's, the fra franchising is no different. The same amount of money has got to be paid. The same amount of money to start your business is what you would buy a franchise for. Yes, but you're going to lose more money. <laughs> well, you do it quicker. Because you make mistakes. Yeah. Well, you, do, you just do it quicker and you do it easier. You're going to spend the same amount. The chances are, one way or another, you're not going to start a business, I don't think, it doesn't have to be paid in one hit, admittedly, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you your expertise. It's going to cost you an insurance. It's going to cost you in a website, all of those things. Now that's what franchising does. It packages it for you. And however, I would never have bought a franchise because my personality is such that I would just go, let's have a look. I'm now thinking, should I start a coding club? Yeah. I'm thinking, should, should we actually start? <laughs> yeah how hard's that it's not hard um but that comes down to personality so all i'd like to say is nikki thank you for your time today i know you're massively busy um supporting all you wonderful people and now you are a franchise or globally well, well um, you know we do try uh, but i think just, you know just just to say i think the thing what i'd really like to say actually because i know that this is um that your focus is on teachers is that it's really scary making that first whatever, leaving your job, setting up a business, buying your business, starting a new job. Sometimes you just need to have a leap of faith. It's, it, and it can be the best thing that you've ever done. It really can. We moved up to London to Northwest. If I had moved up here, lots of, you know, different circumstances, not interesting story at all, but I would never have... Yeah. The thought about setting up my own business. I would still be working in advertising, doing what I always did, you know. And I think sometimes we, we think that we need a certain amount of money and we need yeah. a certain job title. And we don't. We don't. And it, it, it's, for me, I'm looking at, I can look after my kids. I've seen them grow up. I've been able to pick them up from school, drop them off at school, been there for them emotionally. 
Um, I would never have been able to do that if I'd been in my original job, but I would never have made that decision. Sometimes you just need and a what little... what I always say is, the worst comes to the worst, go back. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. But, you, but it won't be. We're in a shortage you... industry. Walk back yeah. through another door. Yeah. That's... But, you, but you won't. You'll, you'll oh, realise. Never... I've never known anybody who's jumped off the top of a cliff and then climbed right the way back up to the top of it. Just doesn't... Exactly. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. If you're ready, if there's something that is making you unhappy in your job, then you, you, you know, I don't know, you might think that you want to do X and you go down that route and then you realise it's not that. But actually what it's shown you is you don't need to go back. What the ex, what the ex did was get you out. Exactly. exactly. It, was just, it was just the parachute that got you out. And actually, it carried you to the direction that you were exactly. meant to be. Yeah. And I think it is about taking ownership. And it is about saying, I can't carry on feeling the way I am feeling in my job. Because when teachers talk about how they're feeling, it's about a job. I don't have a job anymore. I have a business. Yes. And that's a massive difference. And a life. I have a, a life. life. I and have a life. I have to tell me business is my life because I love yeah. it. Well, I, I, yeah, I have to say it is mine as well. But, um, but it's yours. So you, you, know, you put in the hours because you want to, because it interests you, because you're passionate about it, because you're motivated. And then that makes you feel good about yourself. I mean, you know, there's definitely highest highs, lowest lows. COVID, complete nightmare for a lot of people. Yeah. But you struggled with COVID. I didn't. Yeah, uh, but you know, but you've got a. I'm a half full kind of girl. You just got to look at things. What What uh, do we keep saying? Hold your nerve. Exactly. But you know what? Every cloud, every cloud, it teaches you something. Yeah. And you know, look whatever the difference it's made to the infrastructure of your business. Now you had time to work on it. Oh, your my business is so much better. It is so much better. Yeah. Definitely. Hand on heart, hundred percent. I and do, also, I just me, think where your model's concerned, Nikki. Somebody somewhere's going. I make brilliant jewellery. Yeah. Or I make great cards. Or I do this wonderful makeup artist stuff. That's what I'd really love to do if I was out of the classroom. Well, if you've got something like that that you love doing, that's your after-school club. That's yeah. your wraparound care. If you do something that kids can do. That's, I think that's why I've got you here. It's the perfect, perfect business model. Yeah, definitely. And it doesn't just have to be one thing. You can diversify underneath. You can offer different programs. You don't just cook one meal. I've seen your websites. The stuff that you do, you're into recipe books, you're into nutrition, all sorts of stuff goes on with your business. But it yeah. comes from one heading. Yeah, of course it does. And actually, that heading doesn't do it justice at all. So yeah. anybody listening will think I, I go in and I deliver kids cooking classes, which we do, yeah. but we're, we're much more than that. And if it's your own business, you can be much more. Yeah. You can be anything you want to be. You just need somebody just to give a little nudge. Yes, you do. So hopefully people will find that a bit useful. Give them I a bit of a will, break. especially because what I'm trying to do is put ideas in front of people that can be done from the classroom and can be done quite simply and can be done alongside other things as yeah. part of a big exit strategy. Nikki, thank you. Thank you. As always, you hey, certainly I'm will. To having, I'm looking forward to having a real coffee with you one day rather than this one virtual day. stuff. One day, <laughs> and you're paying. Right, my friend. Definitely. See you later. See you, Nikki. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye.